Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. As always, I do appreciate you stopping by. And today, in this video, we've got this Sabina 17 Ruby stainless steel wristwatch. Now, I was sent the link to this from a friend. He'd seen it on eBay. As you can see there, it was only £9.95. So I put a bid in and I won. It was advertised as non-running. And as you can see, the, the case is pretty scratched up. Now, bar from give it a bit of a polish on the case, I'm not going to do a lot to that, but I will be able to buff that back up. It's been pretty, pretty scratched. So we'll take the back off. We'll have a little look inside. See if we can see why it's not running. Yeah. I always like to have a little look at the back of the case as well, just to see if there's any marks, and there are a few there. Look, can you see that hairspring? That will never run. So I think we've identified the issue already. It's that hairspring. If you see where my tweezers are, I'm following it around. It's all over the place. And then we also need a new capsule. So we'll take it out of the case and then start to dis um, disassemble it. And take the front bezel off and you can see the crystal there that's scratched and it's actually loose, runs around in the ring. So we're going to replace that. But we will take these hands off first and use a bit of silicon just to protect the dial. with them off we can put them into a tub keep them safe we can well give them a bit of a clean later that's about it and then to get this dial off we need to just loosen off these dial feet screws then we can have a little look at the dial and it doesn't look too bad to be fair it's a little bit of wear but I've seen worse and there's the dial washer keep that safe with the dial also remove that hour wheel and we can get the movement turned over and then look at removing that balance I am a little bit worried I'm going to be honest I'm still oh it's not even attached so I'm still very hesitant with Hair springs. I can do the slight minor changes, you know, adjustments, but I think this one is a, a bit too far gone for me. I might actually keep this somewhere safe and revisit it in 12 months. You know, once I've had a bit of practice on some of this. But can you also see that pallet fork? They're not supposed to be shaped like a banana like that. So, again, we're going to need to get a new pallet fork. In the meantime, we'll take the power out of the mainspring. You just move the click out of the way and then gently let the barrel unwind, keeping hold of the screwdriver. I did it that way because there is no winding stem. And what I will do is I'll take out that screw and then that should release the tiny bit of winding stem that is in there. And because I can't get to it, what I will do, I'll disassemble this side. I can just set and leave a cover plate. And again, I like to have a little inspect of the parts as they come off. Now we can remove that. That's to keep the setting lever in place. And then with that out of the way, I can just poke my tweezers in and encourage it out. 
and come from the other side and remove it completely. So while I'm on this side, I may as well carry on. So we'll take out the oak spring. There we go, it's quite a beefy spring that is. So we'll put that safe with the rest of the parts. And then we can start disassembling this side. And I've just removed the minute wheel there. And now I'm taking out the intermediate wheels. With those out, we can remove the yoke. Now it's handy to take your tweezers right up to where the pivot is. Makes it slightly easier to, to remove. Take out your winding pinion and your sliding clutch. That's that side almost done. Just have a cannon pinion left. So we can turn it over now and start on this other side. We'll start with that banana of a pallet fork. Now we'll probably have a look for parts individually. So a pallet fork and a, a balance complete. But I'll also, in fact, I'm probably gonna be better off looking for a donor movement. So that's what I will do. For what I would probably pay for the parts, I'll probably save money getting a, a donor movement. So out comes the crown wheel. Again, that's the one with the left-handed thread. And then the ratchet wheel. Then the ratchet. You've got the ratchet spring stuck to the bottom of it. That's a spacing collet for the reversing wheel. Can remove the bridge. The main spring barrel complete. And that'll allow us all. We've got fluff there. It's another reason why it's not running. But can you see that centre wheel? It's bent. So we need a new pallet fork, a balance complete, a centre wheel, a pallet fork bridge, or cock I should say. And oh, there's more. And I think hopefully that might be it. I'm just having a little look at this centre wheel. See how badly bent it is. And we've got almost on every single one of these wheels this fluff. So even if that balance was okay, I don't think this would have run. And if it if it would have run, it wouldn't have run very well at all. more fluff so every single wheel has got fluff on it so even the escape wheel there look
<laughs> it would like a jumper. So before I clean this, I'm going to have a little look at this hairspring. So the first thing we're going to do is remove it from the balance wheel. Use a couple of screwdrivers to do that. Do it carefully. Don't think I could do much more damage. So once it's removed from the balance, I'll have a closer look. That's out of round, it's out of straight. We've got straight parts on the spring. So the idea really is to find where the first bend is, where it first starts to go out and maybe address that. Or we can start on the outside, which is I think where I will start because that seems to be a little easier first of all. So we'll take out that bit of a kink. Work our way around. And like I say, I'm going to repeat myself here. I'm not the best with hair springs. Like I say, it's probably the thing that really still does quite scare me. So if you get it wrong, you can knacker a watch up. The only reason I'm really having a go at this is because, well, it is knackered. As we can see, it's working slowly, but to this point, although I haven't shown everything, I've probably been at it for about an hour. And it doesn't really look much better than when I started. So I think, I'm probably gonna call it a day, admit defeat at the minute, like I say, keep hold of it, you never know once I've had a, a bit of a practice I might come back to it and see if I can do anything and you never know so I managed to source another movement it's the ETA 1120 and again this was advertised as a, a non-runner but all I can see so far is a, a broken winding stem but again I'm not going to film all of the disassembly on this because you've just seen that it's exactly the same as the other but that balance wheel seems to be absolutely fine now the movement has been finished slightly nicer on this one as well so what I am going to do is I'm going to use this as the movement and if it needs anything then the old one will be used as the donor So we can see a nice healthy balance spring. So like I say, you've just seen me do the other movement. So I am going to whiz through this. And we can give it a pre-clean before putting it into the cleaner machine. Now there is a little bit of rust where the winding stem was, so I'm just using a, a nylon brush. Get rid of that. Just run it over some of the other areas where it's spread. And we can put it into some isopropyl alcohol. Get it very drunk. Touch it up a bit with a brush. Hoping. If I treat it right, we'll be in for a good time. Again, I'm 
I'm just going to whisk through cleaning the pre-clean I should say I do this with most most movements but I don't always well in fact I've never shown it so I thought this time I would but I just give the the main plate the bridges and wheels a little dunking the isopropyl alcohol I don't put pallet forks in there and I don't put the balance in there uh, both of those have got jewels that are held on with shellac and the isopropyl alcohol will dil uh, dissolve it and then you're in the realm of then trying to fix jewels again on the rare occasion I might dip the movement into a pot of isopropyl at the very end of the cleaning cycle for literally a second just to dislodge and remove all of the water and then it does dry a bit quicker we can get into the machine and while it's doing that i'd like to say thank you to everybody that's left a comment again you'll see your name start scrolling by on the screen again every comment is appreciated it does help the channel massively along with your likes and all of the people that are subscribing I mean, i'm absolutely shocked you know i thought i might get 10 20 subscribers but we're up above 800 now so thank you again i really really am appreciative i'd also like to apologize for any banging you might have heard there i've got a neighbor doing a bit of work but with all those parts clean what we are now going to do is give some of these jewels a bit of a clean up i'm just going to drop them into some version b dip that's the jewel on top of the trainer wheels bridge and before cleaning I'd already removed the cap jewels so we're going to fish these uh, the the bee dip and they're uh, quite stuck together to be honest normally they will fall apart in the bee dip but I've got a feeling they might be that encrusted with dirt that they're stuck together but there you go a bit of persuasion and they come apart I'm going to pop them back into the bee dip but before I do that I'll show you how dirty they are and give them a, a little bit of a clean this pegwork dipped in a little bit of alcohol and then back into the bee dip give them a rinse Try and escape from you sometimes but now they're clean we can give them an oil and we can put the chaton back on just try and flip it over first gently place it on the top and then capillary reaction will keep it in place And we can get that back into the movement. Now these are probably my favourite type of shock spring. Much easier to do than the ones on the, the last video. I was in the Oris. And do the same process for the bottom. And we can put that back in. And then once they're both back in. we can see how well the balance runs and as you can see there that's looking pretty good so we can remove that and start assembling the movement properly so we'll start with the escape wheel And once that's in, we'll get the fourth wheel in. And then the third wheel. And 
Now before we put the center wheel in, we'll add a, a little drop of oil, and that's the Mobius 9101, slightly thicker oil. drop it into that hole there we go and then this is the screw for the setting lever put that in I do that now before I forget sometimes you'll forget put bridges on and you've got to take them apart To line these wheels up now. You should rock the wheels backwards and forwards. Use a bit of pegwood on the bridge and then you put in a, a, a very gentle pressure down. Right there, that looked like it was all seated, it wasn't quite. Give it a little poke with my tweezers and it drops into place. We can then add a screw in there. Once you've got one screw in, you can actually remove your pegwood. And you should be good to put the other screws in there. Now, you've seen me hand wind these in a few times now, so I haven't shown that. We've got the main spring in, the arbor in, and we'll put the barrel lid on. And the only thing I noticed wrong with this movement was a bit of play in the main spring bridge. So we're going to close that up, get the staking set out. And then we use two punches just to pinch that hole together. And then we use a, a brooch just to open it up again slightly so the idea is to close the hole up smaller than the barrel arbor and then open it up gently by smoothing it out and work hard in it so I'm just testing it there that's all good and what we can do is put that into place as you can see that bridge covers up that setting lever screw. We can screw that down then. Once that's finally tightened down I should give that barrel a little check. As you can see, it's nice and free. And we can come in with a little bit of oil. And put the click spring in. I'm just orientating it the, the correct way. And then we can put the click in there there is a little hole in the bottom of the bridge there that there's a a twist in the spring that will drop through and then the same sort of thing on the top of that click and we'll add a bit of oil in before we put this spacing ring in And the ratchet wheel. Again, this screw is the the normal screw, so lefty loosey, righty tighty. <laughs> but this crown wheel isn't. Again, this is the opposite. But I'll drop a bit of oil on the top. Before the screw goes in and then to do this one up you turn it left and then in, under in it is 
her right hand. You can get the pallet fork back in. Our straight pallet fork. And then the cock. That one has a, a good jewel. So the old one at the original movement was broken. And once we've got them in there, we can put a bit of power in and see if that flicks over as it should. Which as you can see there, that's great. And then before I carry on, I'm gonna oil it. Now the oil I use on that there is the Mobius Molly Cot. Just add a tiny bit on the the face of that jewel and then just work it through do that five or so times and then add a, a tiny bit more once you've done that we can install the balance and we'll see if it runs One of the things with installing the balance, you've got to get it into the pivots. But then there's also the, the roller jewel. You need to have that the right side of the pallet fork. So sometimes if it's not, what you can do is just kind of lift it up. And lift it over. And then sometimes just getting a blower like that will help seat it. And would you look at that, it's running under its own steam. So we'll get that cock die tightened down. That's probably one of my favourite views. So with the train side complete, we'll move on to the dial side. And we'll start with the setting lever. Now we've already put the screw in before we put the bridge on, so we'll get it lined up. And then you can either use a bit of Rodico, put that on the back, or do what I do, pop your finger over it, just like that. And then get a screwdriver and give it a couple of turns. Keep it in place. Don't need to do it right the way up. Still got the winding stem to put in. But before we do that, we've got to go go ahead and reassemble the rest of that keyless works. I'll pop the cannon pinion on. A little bit of the oil on first, and a firm press. And next up is the winding pinion. Before that goes in, we'll add a bit of grease on that. And the grease I use is the, the Mobius 9504. It's a lovely blue colour. We'll just put a, a bit onto the top of the teeth. And then also onto the main plate at the back where the back of that we always sit. See that's uh, on the back of the plate there, and that will distribute when we give it a turn with the stem in it. Then we can pop the clutch in there and do the same again. We can add a bit of oil. This is where the yoke will sit. That'll all get distributed when we turn the winding stem. So we can add a bit of oil where these intermediate oils go. Now there is a jewel there. Uh, I have already oiled it. Just 
making sure there's no chamfer to these wheels because if there there is any chamfer there you the chamfer usually goes down towards the plate and then like i say that jewel there will be hidden by the minute wheel right, oil the minute wheel post looks so i've already oiled that jewel now there is a, a reason i didn't capture that and that's because in between i stopped recording and um, when i made a cup of tea and then when i come back i was adding it to carry on on got to press record but luckily i didn't get too far <laughs> again like I've, I've said before you know i am still learning eventually these hopefully will look really professional we're just gonna add a bit of oil where the yolk will go and as you can see, I've got a bit on the top there, so we'll come with some Rodico, clean that away. And we can pop the yoke into place. And then we can come in with the yoke spring. Like I say, these, these can go flying, so do be careful. I've been on my hands and knees many a time. I have a little magnet trying to find them. And sometimes they just disappear into the twilight zone. And there we go. So I'm going to hold it in place and add a bit of that blue grease. That's where it will rub along the oak there. And again, come in and clean it up. And then we can put this set and leave a bridge on. Now again, as always, I just put it on loosely, give this screw a couple of turns just to keep it in place. And then before doing it up fully, I'll add a bit, bit of grease onto the old lobster claw. And again, this is the spring that will hook under that nub there. And the setting lever. So that when you pull out the winding stem, that knob goes in between the two sort of recesses there. Just making sure it winds up first. And then turning it back, distributing that grease. I'm going to clean up that grease off the top there. And then we can pull the stem in and out once we've tightened the set and lever screw up. And that'll help distribute that grease as well. It doesn't need a lot. I did notice a little bit of play in that cannon pinion there, but I'm thinking once the our wheel's on, that will stop that. But now what we need to do is pop this little jewel back in on the trainer wheels bridge. Once I can get it out there, B dip. And now I've got the the little plate with the jewel in and the screw in there. Keep them together. So we are going to give it a quick clean with a bit of pegwood. Also then give it a, a rinse under the bead up again and then we can add a little bit of oil to it it's trying to escape And this oil that we're putting onto this jewel now is the Mobius 9010. Get that tightened down. And then again. 
again we can oil these jewels with the same oil just a touch and then that center one go with the the red oil and then wipe away any excess and you can use the slightly thicker oil in the center oil wheel because it doesn't turn as fast and then come underneath here with the 9010 and then that's the movement done we will put it on a time graph here and we'll let you know how it runs but I'm gonna steamroll ahead and just put the dial on get it back in its case but before we get the dial on we'll give the, the dial a bit of a clean up with some Rodico so there's a few scratches there's not a lot we can do with the dial but once it's in the watch and you're looking at uh, a little bit of a distance it looks absolutely great I'm just going to loosen off the dial feet screws I always tighten them up when they go into the cleaning machine As you can see there, I've got a new stem. We'll pop the hour wheel on. And the dial washer. So I have been on the old interwebs. Try and find out what I can about the, the Sabina Watch Company. And there is very little information. Well, what I've found out was it was uh, there was a watch company started by Paul Virgil Mathes in 1904, and then by 1919 this was trading as the Sapina Watch Company from Tremelan in Switzerland, and then more lately it was run by Fred Mathes, and he was a, the man named for winding the company up in 2012. But incidentally. The name Sabina refers to the females from the Sabine tribe who lived in the Apennines before the Roman Empire. It may also mean wisdom. But before we put the hands on, I'm just going to give them a bit of a brush up with this pen. They're not having a date. It doesn't really matter where the hands go. But by habit, I'll put it to 12 o'clock. We can press that down. And this is just a little cheap hand press tool I got off eBay. It does the job. We can get the minute hand on. see that's not sitting right we'll find that out in a minute we we'll get the seconds hand on first and that doesn't need a lot of pressure at all just a gentle tap almost and then again I'm gonna run the hands through until that one falls off Let's start again. There, that's better. And then once they're on, we'll try the hands to make sure they don't foul on each other. Or on the second's hand, and that looks great. And there we have my new toys. So I've got some buffing wheels and this grinding wheel. So they are only cheap. I know proper watch versions, if you like, are absolutely thousands. And these were just a, a few quid off eBay. 
We're looking at just the angle, and it's a sanding disc with I think 6,000 grit on. And then we've got these polishing wheels and buffing wheel on a bench grinder. Much better than a drill. So we're gonna try and get some of these scratches out the back of the case. See what we can do there. And then with the main case, we're just gonna give it a bit of a polish. I mean, to be honest, it could probably do with being replated, but I'm not gonna practice on this one. I shall wait. But it is much better to use the Mahandro. So let's see where we've got to, see what it's done. And as you can see, that has taken out quite a few of those. There's still a couple in there. But we'll keep going, we'll change the wheel and the compound. Give it a bit more of a, a shine. I think the back originally was a, a brushed back. Here we are with the, the main case. Just giving it a bit of a buff up. Being a new wheel, there's fibers going everywhere. Hopefully that will stop the more I use it. So we've got a new crystal. And that I'm just gonna use my fingers to press in. I find usually that's enough. I don't break many at all. Now I do have a, again, a cheap crystal tool, but I find it much easier with my hands. You blow any dust out of the way, any hairs. We can get that crystal on. And then with the crystal up, we need to trim this winding stem down. So take the back off, and then I'm just gonna mark the stem roughly where I think it should be cut. And then we can take it out of the watch, get some cutters. And then we can trim the rest of the way with a file. So this bit may take a little while. So you'll file a bit, put it in, see how much more you need to do. Take it out, file a bit more, put it in. As you can see, there's still a, a little bit of a gap there. But once we've got it down to size, we can then fix the crown on properly. This is just a bit of thread lock, this is. Don't even need to take the lid off. There's enough around the side. And then we can screw the crown to it and that'll keep the crown on the winding stem. Stop it from undoing. And then we can get the, the strap on it. Now I'm just waiting for the clasp to arrive for this strap. I have got a gold clasp, but I think a silver one will be better. So we'll put the strap on for now. And then once the strap's on, I'll get it on the time grapher. And then the next time you see it, it'll be on the new owner's wrist. This is gonna go to my mate Joe. He's the one that sent me the original advert. See, obviously he liked it. 
that's why he sent it to me so I think it's uh, gonna be a lovely gift for him now I usually do find putting the spring bars in a little easier just with my nails but it's just lining it up with a hole can be a bit tricky sometimes but you'll feel it click into place when it does go and there we have it so let's get it on the time grapher see how we're doing which ain't too bad at all so again guys thank you for watching next time you'll see this it'll be on the wrist please consider subscribing if you've enjoyed it and hitting the like button and I do appreciate any comments and I'll see you on the next one